G'day, how you going? I'm Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video. I've been designing a layout and I want something that's quite eye-catching for this one. And it's gonna be a mountain, hill, some water, and a beautiful sun setting with some vibrant white light colors against some darker sky colors, okay? I did do a video on this a while back. Uh, didn't really like it and I want to refresh it but also adding some new elements into it to make it more eye popping okay so have a look at the size of the canvas there we're using in centimeters and inches and also we'll get the colors going up the screen as well so as you can pause it and write them down so when you're painting along you've got all the right colors you need and if they're not the exact colors I've got don't worry just use something similar okay you're a beginner you're learning uh, when you become a professional artist, that's when it's really important to have the right oodle doodle of uh, the name of paint you're going to use, all right? Anyway, come on over here and I'll show you what I've got. So I've been designing a bit of a hillside here that's going to be grass, ground cover, coming up to a nice stony rocky hill or a mountain, a bit of a shadow side there. And these lines, they don't look much in this little layout, but they're going to be the colors of the sun setting and reflecting on the lake here. And we're gonna have some clouds in the sky and a bit of a foreground. I'll just show you what I did a few years ago. I like this mountain hill here with the, the grass growing on it, okay? But the foreground here, I'm not a fan of that much anymore. So I wanna change that up as well and add a beautiful sunset creeping up over here or, or sunrise where it's got colors hitting against these bluer colors in the sky. Okay, I've got some student paint or craft paint, soft body white paint and some retarder I want to condition the canvas with. And I'm going to use my brand new two inch synthetic flat brush to get this onto the canvas. Make sure my coffee's out of the way. painted for the sky because the sky is going to have a bit of blending. Alright with the cadmium yellow light here on the medium actually it's medium not light. I'm using a pouncer you can use a pouncer or a brush. I want to get this I'll wet it a bit just so it's going to transfer easier. This will be the yellow in our sunset and it's going to be a football shape so there's pretty much all my sunset there and with this as you can see I'm working in the water colors as well not too much of this that's enough don't go too big because we've got to add their red now so I'm getting all those bubbly marks out of there Pretty much that, because then we want red coming out from it. Now back down here, I have quinacridone magenta. I've got a smaller pouncer. This is a set that I bought in the craft shop, so that's why I'm using them today. You can use different size brushes for this. I'm just using this to stamp the paint onto the canvas. And why I'm using a smaller one is because I need to come around this now. If I use the same size, I'm gonna have a big radius of it. So I'll start from there. I'm going to have to bomb some more onto this. I find using these pouncers, they use a lot more paint than a brush, but I just find it interesting. So we're going to come out there, and I want to come around. I'm coming on a... You can sort of see the shape I'm coming, okay? There, like that. Can you see that? Fine. Now that's the footprint I want for the red. So now I'm going to stamp it in. Okay, I'm just meeting the yellow 
at the moment like that. Now I'm getting all the, the red footprint stamped and coloured first. I'm giving little twists as I do this. Just so it's going on. Because just to up and down, you've got to go too much. But when you give it that little twist, see what it does? It really smears it in there. All right, we've got that done. Now I'm going to start bringing this into the yellow. Okay, so if you want to feel, oh, I can't quite get it with the pouncer, Ian, use a brush. And I'm going to use a brush now. I'll just show you. So I'll put that down. I'll grab a blending brush. And I want to stamp. Because we want the transition of these two colours so artistic that you're in love with your painting. Okay, look at that. So we're getting there. Careful. You don't contaminate the yellow too much. If you do, well, you just got to put the yellow back. So I'm getting that. Wipe it as well. Be sure to wipe your blending brush. You build up a lot of paint. I've got it into the yellow as, as much as I want it. I don't want to contaminate that yellow too much. Now I'm grabbing another blending brush to bring the yellow back into the magenta there. Okay, that other brush that I was using, we'll see there, it's contaminated with too much of the magenta and I don't want to kill the orange, the yellow here. So we're killing that down a bit just so we've got a beautiful transition. Everything's looking lovely. And you can play with this for five minutes, five hours, or five days. There's no rush how long it takes for you to do your painting, okay? And keep wiping your brush. I just want to get rid of those bits there. Tease it into that yellow. You could probably even try an Indian yellow, even though it might be a bit rich, but give it a go. There we go. And then we'll put the blue. Now the blue against that red is going to create our purpley colours as well. But before I do that, I want to get this area now teased up a bit. So as our blue's got something to dance with. See what I did there? That's my waterline there, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, back down on the palette. My preference of watercolour is going to be phalo blue the sky and the watercolor anyway now we do not want a very loud bright blue we've got white I'm gonna put a little bit more with it we've got white on the canvas already with that retarder so I'm lightening that up a bit and if anything the top of the sky I want dark and the bottom hitting the yellow and the red will be lighter so I'll get this up there let it wear out off the brush, I'm not worried. Down here, there's our water as well. Now I'm going to crisscross it to that magenta colour. And it's going to pick up the blue and the red together, which will create a bit of a purple, but that's fine. We've got that barrier between the blue and the yellow to stop green happening. I'll get some of this just in there as well, in our water. There we go, there. And I want to use this brush. I'll just wipe it on the paper towel there. Get all the boltness off. I don't know if how much it's going to... We've still got to get white in there yet. That's just the water pulling across. Okay, pretty simple. Now I'm grabbing the blending brush and we want to blend the sky into the blue, I mean the, the magenta there. So we're pulling that through, getting a reasonably 
healthy looking transition of the two colours. And because they're sitting on top of a retarded surface, the white craft paint with retarder mixed in it, they're staying damp a lot longer than an acrylic would normally do. And it's allowing me to blend. I'm getting the, the sky area ready to have some nice clouds in there. And don't worry about um, the colour. I mean, you need to worry about the colours, but they're going to pick up in the clouds, which will create. See, I've got some red sort of brushing up there. I don't mind that because we're going to have some clouds closer to the horizon line, which will allow them to pick up the sunsetting colours. Now, before we get started, with the clouds, I'm picking up some of the white again, and I want to put right in the middle here. I'm going to have, where's my design gone? So it's going to come down. I want the white just being seen on the back side of the hill. I need this white there. This white's going to pop. This is just the craft paint I'm picking up on a smaller pouncer, or you use a smaller brush. But there's me white i'll wipe the pouncer on a towel and i'm going to use it just to fade into that yellow there i'm not worried about the bottom see i've left it because what you do grab mr flat again and pull your water pretty easy Okay, good old titanium white out of the tube, and I'm using my fan brush to stamp on some clouds. Now, how do I want my clouds? I know my hill's going to be about here, so I want something. I'll start with the bottom ones, and you watch. These will create the sunset within the clouds because it's picking up all that paint underneath. It's very wet. Okay, see how I put body with that cloud? I didn't just do a, a weird line. It's got body to it. I call it body. And we want an appropriate size blending brush to blend the bottom side of that easily does it. So I'm going to stamp on and off like this. And bits are twisting. And it's creating all the pattern, the vibrancy, the turmoil within the colours of that cloud. And if anything, I want the bottoms flat to create the illusion these clouds are coming over our head. So there's a sunsetted cloud colour. We don't really have to muck around and put the grey tone and the yumminess in these because they're a sunset cloud. So after painting one cloud, every time you do a new cloud, I have a tub of water for washing the brush. Okay, this one's got a ribbed surface down below and I rinse it in here and rub it dry ready to load up for another cloud, all right? And if anything, I want these clouds kind of sparing out this way like that, okay? So I'll put, I don't want to overdo it though, so I'm going to put this one here now, coming off the page right up there. I'm just wobbling this backwards and forwards. There we go. <clears throat> I can use a bigger blending brush for this one because it's a bigger cloud and see all that blue in the white it's going to pick up move bits of white and blue everywhere this one you can probably add yumminess because it's all the one value the one color cloud okay so he's right off the page there now that's pretty much a light blue cloud so that's why i say we can add the yumminess to this so i'll quickly clean that brush oh, you know i could have even had another brush on standby that's already clean but it doesn't matter and we'll add our yumminess to here so and this will give it dimension that cloud something like that and lightly leaves a lot of that there I'm just going to look in the monitor and see how that's fair and no, not too bad I'm not a fan of it but it'll do 
I might start in the yellow, come this way, creating the top, the bottom's just happening on its own with my movement of the brush. Okay, grab the blending brush. I'll grab a smaller one because that's, I want to get some, I want to get right in there. So I just want to blend that in very carefully pull your brush off and look at the bottom make sure it's going the way you want don't just hope for the best you're the artist so you've got to create your work and make it happen I'll bring that off the page there it's not too bad of a cloud I suppose we oh see that wasn't any good but it's all right I don't mind that bit of red there I'll put that a few there right across the and just easily tickle the tops I'm sort of fading the bottom of that one down and put some other wishy-washy stuff here this is not a cloud this is just sort of the smearing of maybe clouds in the sky get something up there into that fashion oh, blend this See the brush moving it all around, it creates that turmoil and busyness within your cloud structure on your painting you'll find. See there, see how easy that was? Try not to think too much. Once you've done your practice, you can do this with your eyes shut. And we've got, how's that looking? We've got some great cloud action fluffing around in the sky there. I'll get some over here. Just to sink that back now. So watch. Um, I didn't want to overcloud the sky, but I'm getting carried away. Big blob there. Don't like that. And we'll <coughs> let's get this one done. Leave the bottom on it. The bum. That'll put the over the head look into your sky. It's putting that other one underneath it further back. Turmoil all that, get the turmoil going. Come right off the painting. That's what I've done. And something's just coming across the sky there. Clouds are all, as you know, they're all different. They're not uniform. There's no set way to do them. I wouldn't mind putting maybe a little bit of grey in there. So I've picked up another fan brush and where I want the grey, I'm going to put it across the bum of the cloud. This one's right away from the sunset, so it's a bit of a normal cloud. It's just something I can explain in this tutorial. Now I'm going to use the cloud, the grey in that cloud to get the darker bum on there as well. And we want to slowly, as you wipe the build up off, Bring that into that whitey blue colour that you blended, soften it in there. Okay, this has added the weather in that cloud there. Not too bad. Well, probably wouldn't hurt if I can put a bit of grey in there, maybe, just to give that some of the same aspect. And now, of course, once you've done that, you want to add your yumminess. So wash the brush so it's nice and clean and not contaminated. Pick up some white and look at your clouds. Squint your eyes and work out, all right, I want maybe some there, some rolling around in the grey, giving it the three-dimensional look. Put a bit more back in here as well. So I'll quickly do this one. that looking that's not too bad and we'll get this yumminess satisfied into the gray there as well I've got a lot of tutorials where I'm doing so many different ways of clouds and you just need to look at the thumbnail clouds and if you like it watch that tutorial and just learn how I've done them it doesn't have to be the whole tutorial you're learning now I want to pick up some more of the blue Maybe mix it with some of this white here. Don't want it very dark. 
just so I was within the water, I can get some blue values running through here. You got me? Yeah, it's like that, so it's not a big, neat ring there. How's that? Fine. See what I did there? I'm just going to grab my two inch synthetic brush, the one I used before, just to pull them into the water, get them working. Now I'm going to come down and upish just to, here we go, and finish it off with a straight crossover of the canvas there. Okay, it's time to dry that and we can start adding the mountain in. The other mountain I did was just the daytime blue sky, but having this beautiful bright sunset behind, it's gonna change the aspects of this painting to look visually artistic. If you've got a coffee, take time to enjoy your coffee and give me the thumbs up while you're watching this video. And like I said, be sure, watch the whole thing through if you're gonna paint along with it, just so you know what's up ahead in your journey in this painting, all right? So now we're gonna dry this and put our mountain on. So, I'm not going to worry about drying the whole lot. I'm only going to dry where I'm putting the mountain. So as the rest can dry on its own. And we've already made up the flavours of the water. So how's that going? I'm drying it in real time, okay? So you can pretty much see how long this has taken for me to dry. And that's not too bad. And I'm going to map in the mountain with black gesso, all right? You can use uh, a black paint, but I'm gonna use black gesso because it's flat black and it'll really pull the colors I'm putting on top of it out, all right? Okay, back down on my palette here, I have some black gesso. I don't need to put it onto the palette because I've got my brush here. So what I'll do, just so you can see what's in my head, before I put that onto the canvas, I'll show you where I'm putting it. And I want the, where do I put my diagram? Let's have a quick look at my pencil diagram. So that's the sunset there. This is where I want the lowest point of the hill. And it's pretty much gonna come up with some height, because it's a mountain. It's not a hill, it's a mountain. And pretty much there, off the page and so that's coming here pretty flat and then sort of comes up again all right and then it'll come across the water there so that's what I'm doing in my head you probably I hope you can see that but you get an idea now I might have to put this on the palette to wet it down a bit for it to transfer let me just see See, I've got that line there. Give yourself a line so you've got something to go by. Otherwise, you'll scare yourself thinking, am I going to ruin it? And you can see why I've dried the painting because you do not want this turning into mud. So what I'm going to do is put some, spray some water there, get some of this out of the tub. make it see what I've done there and when I'm filming now I'm worrying about the top here okay that's all I'm worried about where'd that go over here I'm worried about the top line and then we'll just block in the rest of it let's hope I turn that camera on Yeah, she's on. All right, then we'll just block it in. Just before we get too far ahead, I want a slight higher 
down the foreground here and lower here because I'm just going to have a bit of a foreground with a path in it as well. Just about that low. Now you don't have to put this on if you don't want to, this is optional, but I've designed this painting to have this on there when I was sitting in my office mucking around page after page trying to get something to look unique and different. So that's mapped in as well, ready to take the lighter colours. Now before I dry it, I've got another half inch flat brush and I want to get the, the darker shadow side on before I do the lighter side. So over here I've got just my mid-tone grey from a tube and I want to find pretty much the area where it's hanging over the dark side which is pretty much like that. I usually zigzag down from the point. You probably don't know what that looks like yet. And because that black's still wet, I'm going to smear this just into it. So it's going to break up in a roundabout fashion. And why I've grabbed the burned umber on the palette there is if this come too bright, I can darken it up just with the burned umber. Because I need this to be mixed and marbly and scratched and shadowy. And then before I put the other colour on, it's going to be dried. So I'm just, it's working all right so far for me. We're getting that down there. And let's just try, I'll see what it's looking like. I'm just picking up some of the burn number, just to see. Yeah, it's adding values of dark rock there, which I like. And if you think you've gone too dark again, pick up the grey again. There we go. Everything can be done with a brush with the acrylics. The oil guys get to use a knife. That'll do. Now everything's dried. I've dried it down here. I've got some raw sienna dark. So I want a, a bit over here with some white in it. This is going to make up our sandstone rock for the opposite side there. So we've got the raw colour and the tinted with white. Okay, I've still got some, of, let's try a bit of this all marbled up as well. See what that does for some darker aspects of it. There we go. Now with anything, I want to start making the actual detailed cliff face against this shaded side and then bring it down to about here and fade it so as we've got rocks and the ground cover coming up it. So first I want to get it on here. It doesn't matter if it's scratchy, see like that. Now I want to create the, there we go, I'm creating the sharp edge right against that grey there. So I'm creating it the way I feel I want it to be. And don't forget, let's say there's a dot there, all these lines have got to match up to that. Don't have them all coming down the one way, otherwise it'll look a bit weird. So we're creating there. So I'm tilting the brush and turning it as I go. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll break it, let it break up off the brush. That's fine. Get in there, you. I need to have a look. Whoa. And you can always like, I'm going to pick up some of the raw sienna dark without the white mixed in it. And you'll just see, see what's happening. We're getting different rock, stone, sand colors going up the mountain there, which is all good. You could stroke them up with if you want. So it's looking quite all right. I'm happy with that. Now I'll pick up some of the, without even cleaning the brush, I've got some of that burn umber and I want to come down. See, see these long bits? Get it right in that pocket there. There you go. Look at that. Don't forget to keep all these lines. And it's just quick, load the brush up again, quick, simple flicks. And there you go. We've got some sort of bullshit happening on our 
mountain there. And if, like I said, if you feel oh, I've lost too much of my lighter grey there, just add it back, okay? There we go, how's that looking in the monitor? That's not too bad. Now before it dries, I'm grabbing some of the white and I shall take it off the brush just so as we get some highlighted stuff coming off this brighter side. It's not going to look white on there, but it's putting the lighter values there. You might have some snow at the very top because that's a high mountain in real life. That's hundreds of feet high or even thousands of feet high. But that's pretty much what I wanted. I won't make it like there's another ridge here somewhere on it. You make it up as you go. Mm, down there. Wipe the brush and then break it down to the bottom. Okay, that's pretty much, we can muck around with that all day if we want, but that'll do. And where are we? Roughly somewhere here, I'll put me path. So I've picked up the raw sienna dart with the colour I used up there, the one with the white mixed with it. And somewhere in the middle here, get it nice and sharp to the black. And just create a simple path. Come wider as you come to the front of the painting. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So I've just sort of fanned it out like that. Okay. Okay, I've got forest green and the cadmium yellow medium there again. So I've got my flat two inch synthetic brush. This is something I can stamp on lay of the land. So I want it to do bits of stuff going up the hill. See like that? Real veiny and tracy and stampy. Okay, so I want to, because this is the darker value of the grass. So we'll get this coming up the, what do I call it a hill? It's a mountain, not a hill. And we got this veining up the rocks where the, getting it up there up there some of it got right up there a little bit but look at that this is fun to do relax get your brush light in the hand and it's it's doing all the work itself and these make for a good type of mountain in acrylics so I'm stamping on there this is all like you know in the the hills are alive this is the sort of area there so I'm just stamping this on. It might not be noticeable, but when we add the yellow green over this, it's going to create the shape of the land. And all this green was just the depth under it. And some of that black is showing as well that I painted on there, which is allowing depth and shadow. And I do want some of this, because it's low, coming all the way over to this side. And there we go. I love this mountain idea, I really do, I love it. Take your time, remember there's no rush. See, that's all we wanted to do. And we'll do the same at the bottom. Chisel it onto your brush. And you wanna leave some black in between the path and this. Okay, done. Now I'll get all the way back here. I'll do the other side off camera, but I'm just showing you one side. Leave some black in there. Now I've blow dried that. That's a good thing about it because you need it to be blow dried so the other color's gonna stand out on top of that. And without washing the brush now, I wanna start creating a yellow green. So I'm just letting the paint that's in the brush mix with the yellow here a bit. Okay, and you can even use a smaller brush if you like. So I want to leave the darks there. Don't kill all the darks. You need them there. So we'll just 
without the darks, this light stuff. And if anything, I'll put it on top of that darker color. On top there. That's it. Just keep loading your brush up. Very lightly hit it. And this is just making the distant grass, lawn, whatever's on the field there. And ignore your blobs, like I've got one there. You can always get the, um, the forest green and come back and put the darker colour back again. So I want to come up the hill there now, see what we're doing. And then we'll just highlight the very centre of this hill ridge here with some more yellow just where the sun is to intensify that area. Where are we? I'll keep going here. It's a bit undernourished there. And go random all over the place so you don't get a straight pattern anywhere. Now I'm going to pick up more of the yellow like I said and just in this bit easily does it just put some I haven't dried anything oh I'm gonna have to dry it mate you make sure you dry yours I gotta add that green back because that's too bright there but you see what I mean. Same thing back down here. I've got the yellow green that I've mixed and I want to kind of come to the path, leaving some shadow between this green and the path. And if anything, I'm coming on a up down to the path. So it looks like the path is worn into the area. Just like that. Okay. And this just makes for a simple, Effective foreground. Get right off the painting there. Leaving some of the dark. If you put the light colour over that path, it's going to look like it's floating. And until you can put the shadow there, it brings it back to real life. Realism, reality and purpose. and Not purpose, but it looks right in your painting. Okay, that wasn't too hard, was it? All right, now grabbing the grey on that half inch flat brush that we had before, I want to put the bank on the far side just so it's giving it a bit more realism. So work out where you want your stick because you want a reasonably straight line here, but it doesn't have to be a tight, sharp one. So this is going along there. Don't worry if it's fat and skinny in places. This is, if anything, you can look at this as the bank on the far side, distinguishing the high trees, because that's far away. All that green we put on there is pretty much forest trees in the distance. Oh, and I've deliberately left a bit of black between the two, okay? And now what I want to do is get some white on the same brush after I've cleaned it. And I've watered it down a bit just so we've got some transparency there. And instead of using a knife, I'm going to use this to get some water hitting against that grey. And why I said use it transparent, I've got it transparent, is because it washes and looks opaque and we can make the water film out of it. So we've got it on there and we're making the water film. Now watch, get some of it off. On these light bits, we want them as skinny as possible. See like there? They're not thick and loud. On these darker bits that we put in the water earlier, Like, see, look for those darker bits. 
and just put the most skinniest highlight on there. Instead of doing it with a knife, I find this so much confident and easier. How's that bank look? Not too bad. I might just darken it up a bit. So I'm just going to grab some of the... I'm just grabbing the darkest colour on my palette, which is that burnt umber. And I just want to get in between that grey and there a bit darker. Just to give it a sense of realism. And I think that's not dark enough, so I'm just picking up some of the black that's left down there. And we'll scurry that in there. Yeah, that's working. It's just given depth along here. And a bit more. Okay. All right, if you haven't got yourself a bullshit stick or a level stick make yourself one or buy one they're great what i'm doing is putting some wind on the water surface closest to the foreground and i'm trying to do it in a scattered overly shape and i'm just this this stick allows me to have these level now you want this opaqueish as well and see i can do a series of nice little white scallops hitting the water so i'm going to have a band of them now this is tedious time consuming but it adds that element of wow to your painting <laughs> just knowing to put these in there helps so i'm doing kind of a band near the let's say the closest side here because we can see it random groups Try and keep them all the same size though. Okay, we can keep detailing this till the cows come home. I've got some of the red and daubed into the blue area and some of the blue and daubed in there, smeared it a bit, just to get the surface of the water the way I wanted it. Now I'm gonna put my autograph on here and be sure to check the links in the description below. You can purchase my paintings following those links. There's, there's a link to show you what Paintings of mine are available for sale. And there's a link for my art group page. There's lots of links there. Check them out. See what's in my cupboard. Get that paint really wet. It's breaking up. The wetter you can have this. See there, the better your autograph will go. I'm still yet to find the right brush to get a perfect autograph, but here we go. Steve's little foot. Okay, we'll just put a frame on that and see how that landscape looks in this frame. Yeah, that's not too bad. I like to have a white in a border in my frames. That's not too shabby. We've got a sunset mountain there. Just beautiful sky. You can make it the flavour you want, the way you want. But we've got the elements to make a great painting. All right, I had fun painting this and I hope you had fun watching me do this today. And if you did, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.